Hi and welcome to free Excel tutorial videos. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you why you should use the subtotal function instead of doing a subtotal on a data set. Okay, so the, sub, the subtotal function uh, will give you more flexibility when, it want, when you want to create a dashboard report. Okay, so let's get to it here. I have a data set and I have um, applied filters. Okay, so let's come over here on the data tab and have filters. And up here I have the subtotal function. I'm going to show you three, uh, three actually the subtotal function in calculating three things, which is the sum, average, and count. Okay. Um, so let's come here and say equals subtotal. Okay, and um, let's say I'm going to choose sum and sales. Okay. I'll show you how to do this later on. Okay, so what I did was I created a subtotal function outside the traditional data set that we have here. And and when I filter my report, you can see the amount here change. Okay, so in the filter, I'm going to select, let's say, just from the product, I'm going to select only the business software. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Okay, so I only want to see the sum for this particular product. And there we have it. Okay, this is the amount for business software. Now, um, I can further define uh, this and say I want to see only the month in maybe, let's see, let's select June and May. Okay, let's see only two months. So again, we have a different result here in the subtotal function. Okay, so the subtotal function can provide me with a clean and a very neat dashboard report. Okay, so why is this better? Okay, let me show you now the subtotal. Okay, the traditional subtotal that we do with the data set. Okay, here I have the exact same data set. So let's go through the subtotal. Okay, first you need to know which field you want to subtotal. Okay. It could be the sales, it could be the rate, and but in this case, we are going to do the product, okay? And first, you need to sort the data, okay? This is a big difference between the subtotal function and subtotal. For subtotal, you always need to sort your data. So let's come over here to this um, product field. With one cell selected, we're going to choose to sort through ascending order. So we're going to get um, here, accessories and business software. Okay, so when I have this data sorted out, and when I use the subtotal, um, um, what do you call this function? No, use the subtotal option here for this data set. Okay. Um, it will create a break, okay? It will create a break after this, the last accessory, okay? This is the gotcha step, okay? A lot of people make mistakes when they use the subtotal from the outline group here in the data tab. So if they do not, if they do not sort their data, their subtotal is going to be a mess, okay? So let's click on the subtotal from the data tab. Let's click subtotal and you will see the subtotal dialog box. Here we want to select the product. Okay, and let's use the sum definition the function. And for the add subtotal tool, we will select sales and let's click OK. And so you here we have it. And if we we have this, this, this is the, the different views that we get from the subtotal. So this is the first view. This is the, and if we collapse the view, we will get a, a pretty nice report. Okay. But 
if you come over here, you see this this function subtotal, and you see nine. Okay, this nine. What is this number nine? Okay, this number nine refers to the sum function. Okay, so there are eleven types of function that you can do with subtotal. Okay, um, let's go back to the previous uh, worksheet that we have here, and let's take a look at this function. Okay. Uh, we, it's the same over here. We have number nine, which represents the sum function. And in total, there are 11 types of function that you can do with the subtotal function. So there is the count function, there is the average function, and so on. And these functions are listed based on the alphabetical order. So let's come over here and you can see this, okay? We have here this is a very good, uh, what do you call it? Uh, tool that Excel provided, you can see uh, the, the functions over here. Okay, so you don't have to remember which is which, okay, you have to have to remember which number represents which function. With this subtotal function, you can just select or type in the number of which one that you want, okay, like this, or one, or five, okay. So we have the average function, the count function, the max, mean, and the sum function is number nine. So let's click number nine. Okay. So um, so let's come back to the data set here, and I'm going to remove the filter. Okay. So I'm going to use. You can either click on this. This icon over here, you see it's a toggle on off icon, or you can use the control shift L. Control shift L will bring up the filter, and you press control shift L again, it will remove the filter. Okay, so now let's remove the filter. And over here, I want to apply uh, this function, all right? Uh, average function. Okay, so for the average function, we're going to start off with equals and we're going to type subtotal. So I'm going to use the function auto complete. Select the one with your arrow keys or with your mouse. You can do like this or you can use the arrow keys. Press tab and here you have the options on which function that you want to use. So average function is number one. So let's type number one and then comma. Okay. And I'm going to use F3. Okay, I've already created a name range for sales over here. So I'm going to choose sales and complete the function by closing with the right parenthesis and click OK. Click enter, sorry. And this is the average for the entire data set. Okay. So say that I want to filter the data. So I can just press Ctrl Shift L, which will bring up the filter. And I would like to see only the computer and networking, okay? And I select the two of them in the filter and click OK. And you can see that the subtotal functions will change, okay? The sum will show the sum for both of these product and the average will also change for the networking and the computers, okay? And uh, I can take a step further. By filtering the dates, I can come over to the filter over here and choose to see maybe only in February and click OK. So you can see that there's only one in February, okay? And you can you can play with this. You can select two months and you can see the subtotal function will automatically update the result based on your filter, okay? So using the subtotal function is really much better than using a sum if function or a sum ifs function or other functions that, you know, uh, so you should really consider using just the subtotal function for your data set, okay? So now let's come to this data set and use Control Shift L to remove the filters. And now I'm going to do one more function over here, okay? So let's do a count function. So let's begin with equals type sub. Total. We have the subtotal function here. I'm going to press tab 
for function auto complete and for the count function is it is number two so you can right click comma and then we will enter the name range which is the sales click double click right parenthesis to complete the function and hit enter okay so the total count of products is 996 and this includes all the different types of products that we have in our data set okay so once again we can use the filter over here select any cells here with filter and say that i only want to see the count for um, let's see the design software the graphic design software okay so i will only see the graphic design software in the filter and the count for the graphic design software is 142 the sum for this product is two hundred nine thousand three hundred eighty dollars and the average is 1475 okay and you can go one step further by filtering the dates as well so you can choose only to see in may and june may and june okay so you can see the amount also changes okay so using this subtotal function really provides you with better flexibility to analyze your data set so there you go so that's all for this video i will see you in the next tutorial video